I'll move us on to our next speaker, who will be uh, the Irish rascal promoted in the debate announcement. So, hello. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, no more questions. Whenever you're ready, Fudgy. Oh, dear. So, let's see if this makes sense. Um, the internet connecting people more and more is a good thing. Is the internet a good thing? Why is it a good thing? Well, it's true. It is. And it has been for many years. In fact, since its launch of the World Wide Web back on August 1991. But recently, over the last few years, in particular, the internet has connected people in a much faster and better rate than ever. This is mainly due to the invention of the mobile phone. And also many different devices. Who here in this debate doesn't have a mobile phone or another type of device? I don't think there'd be too many. So we all love the internet, don't we? We all use it. We use it in many different ways and many different forms. Think back to 1991. Do we use it in the same form as what they do now? Hmm. Don't think they would imagine we'd be looking up the same things that they would. We are connected to the internet 24-7, 365 days of the year. What do we use it now that makes connecting people better? Well, think, even within this server. Furry Valley, what is it? It's got gaming, it's got different, different subcategories for many multiplayers brings a lot of people together. This server overall brings a lot of people together, especially with the similar interest, the biggest one being the furry fandom. Would the furry fandom exist without the use of the internet? Would we all be on this together, having a public debate? Or would the people watching the video on YouTube later on be able to communicate and watch it along with us? The main answer to this is no. Yes, the internet or the, the furry fandom would be here, but it wouldn't exist to the same extent that it is now. <laughs> to break down the internet a bit more, not going into too much detail, but to break it down as well. The internet allows something like a home business to flourish. Any business, from small to large, you can go into a marketplace that they've never had the ability to before. Just really to think outside of the shop door. Not only from a business point of view, but a people point of view. People who don't feel comfortable, can't maybe talk, they feel, you know, isolated. And they're not being able to be out there and able to chat. So the use of the internet means everyone can become more social. It builds their confidence, it connects people, and even provides support to people who think there's maybe no one out there. The list is endless. The internet is that endless, it even knows the answer to why did the chicken cross the road. But that's another debate. In terms of communicating and feeling, and the feeling of being uncomfortable about speaking or talking, well, the internet's great because for a start, you're in the perfect place. You're all in a debate chat. Want to chat but don't think you could? Again, you're in the perfect place. All you have to do is message an admin on here and they will help you through it. And trust me, they'll be happy to help. Even message me. I'm always up for helping. <laughs> Ask Paco. <laughs> he does it all the time. It helps them promote people and bring them together. Talking and embracing their social life. And that's brilliant. It's a valuable skill in which you can take outside of the internet and use in real world situations, real life situations. Sure. With the way that the internet is taking over, companies have thought of that. Look at Chet Pumpkin, or Pipkin, CEO and founder of Belkin. And he put it in his words, the world is made up of trillions of things. Cars, planes, jet engines, exercise equipment, even the items on my desk. And the internet. It's all there, isn't it? This, the category is about all of these things on the internet as we know it, coming together. Anything I can do over the internet, blend it with my things. So this man, he's seen the internet was good for communicating and bringing people together. What did he do? He made the most. He set up a company. It's no one all around the world. How do we know it's all no one around the world? <laughs> the internet. Sure, in 2018, there was 23.14 billion devices connected to the internet. 
Compare this to 2015 at 15.41 billion. By 2025, 75.44 billion will be connected and using this to communicate. That's quite a bit, isn't it? So to try and summarise up if the internet is a good place to communicate, then it's clear and obvious it is. Whether it's a smartphone in your hand or an internet-connected home entertainment system that goes Alexa. Uh, or the many different other ones too. More objects are becoming internet-bound. And our world is growing fast, and this is a major part of it. So whether you're someone who's hooked to the internet all day long, or someone who still reads by the candlelight, one reality of our modern life is that we are experiencing the internet in different forms, and enjoying the access to, che to check more data, information, thoughts, and even checking in at the gym. Sure, if you don't check in, how will folk know you're there? And uh, as it was mentioned earlier on, look at the older generations. They use the internet for the first time. They can't believe they are able to see someone at the other end of this little device in their hand. They're able to connect with family, friends, something they may have never seen before or only seen pictures of or haven't seen for years. I don't know about you, but if that's not saying the internet's good for communicating and making a positive effect, then what is? So, hopefully I didn't ramble on too much, and thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Fudgy. Any questions for Fudgy? Like this. Nobody's talking. <laughs> Fudgy, um, okay, I'll, I'll ask you a question then. No. Um, you mentioned the older generation. Yes. But um, yeah. it's not like their reception of the, uh, the internet and that growing connectivity is unequivocally um, good. Um, a very common um, response is that, you know, um, people are in some ways more connected, you know, they can communicate more easily. That's led to a decline of the local community, you know, things like you can't leave your door unlocked anymore, um, you can't properly trust your neighbours, you know, this idea that there's, the idea that um, you don't know who's around you, um, you don't really have a community, um, and they partially blame the internet and the fact that all these young'uns sit on their phones rather than actually going out <laughs> and engaging with people. What do, you, what do you make of that claim? That's true, though. We do all sit on our phones. But how did we all get to sit together to sit on our phones? By contacting one another on the phone. <laughs> That's so true, perverse. <laughs> mm. Can't get to hear that one on the YouTube video. And now we have another brave, brave person to ask a question. Vakara. As you said, with technology, it's getting better and better with situations like that. One question I would ask is, as people are getting more connected and more advanced, how would you say, with what we have now, how, how we can go even farther? Possibilities are endless. There was, I remember watching a program once, and they were saying, it was like watching a futuramic program. They were saying that eventually, drones are going to take over. We're going to have our own personal drone, and it's going to have all our information, and it'll fly right above us. We don't know what's going to happen next. It's just growing and growing and growing. Thank you very much. Uh, more questions, then? Do you think that the relinquishment of um, personal information at the sake of communication uh, is actually a valid thing um, that is um, that affects this sort of communication that we currently have. Like, uh, for an example, um, different internet companies existing and being able to provide you know, the services that they have by collecting and selling data. Um, what is your what is your thoughts on that? <clears throat> You've actually you've just stumped me with that question. Um, if you don't mind, sorry, just say, can you explain it again there? Sorry. Well, that's all right. Um, uh, let's say uh, companies like um, like Google, um, they're able to provide YouTube to us at a service because uh, they take our information and they um, and they sell it. Um, and uh, YouTube does not make them any money. In fact, it's a money sink. Um, but it's we are able to actually have 
that service at the cost of relinquishing our personal information to Google? Uh, is that um, is that fit into how does that fit into your uh, your uh, view on the uh, internet and interconnectivity between people? Well, you have to give your information on nearly everything. Every service you provide, you have to give some amount of information over. So, without giving any information over, how are they going to know? For example, um, hmm, with with you're saying that Google there takes a certain information and gives us a service such as YouTube. Well, if you wanted to go to the shop and buy something, you have to give money over, don't you? So to have the information that, uh, to have um, that information that they want to relate to the service, I've actually confused myself now. <laughs> It's all right. Um, don't do you think one. that... You really have stumped me on that one, actually. I wasn't prepared for that answer. It's been a long day. Well, let's, have a, <laughs> it's let's, okay. have a, let's have a one sentence answer if I've got more people to get through. Oh. No worries. I'll think about that one. I'll, I'll private message you with that one. I, th I, th right. I think oh, yeah. um, your data is a product like any other, and any transaction between two people or a people in the company, a company is going to have one side giving one thing in exchange for another thing. And it just so happens that in the case of Google or other internet companies, you're almost forced into that transaction by using the service. Um, so just a business transaction. If you don't like it, don't use the service. Um, yes. Yeah. That's what I was All trying right. to I, I, I don't like it, but yeah, YouTube clone plus. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's data, personal information as a form of currency. Mm, exactly, absolutely. If I might add to that real quick, it really is the yeah. Go on quickly. It it really is more or less the trade or the trade off that we have to accept for it not being a paid service and being a free service. Mm, yes, right. We'll we'll come on to shorter speeches and more open chatter at the end. Um, I want to go back to Cedar and his question now. Cedar, are you ready? Uh, yes. Uh, that actually answered my question there. Uh. So I'm, I'm good. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, yeah.